Thank you for coming to another presentation on Sri Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur's Sri Madhurya Kadambani, the Monsoon Clouds of Sweetness. We're going to continue today with our discussion of the five stages of eradication of anarthas. The sequence in which anarthas arising from Aparad was discussed. Now Vishwanath explains removal of the other three types of anarthas. Srila Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur previously described that the cessation of anarthas takes place in five successive stages and that the sadhaka thus gradually becomes free from the most prominent hindrance to bhakti, anarthas arising from aparad. Now he is describing the sequential freedom from the other types of anarthas, those from sinful and pious activities and those from the practice of bhakti itself. At the stage of bhajana kriya, the cessation of anarthas arising from sinful and pious activities is almost complete, praiki. Upon attaining the stage of nista, the cessation of these anarthas is complete, porna. And at the stage of asakti, the cessation of such anarthas is absolute, achyantiki. And there remains no chance of their sprouting again. We will now look at some visual presentations of the various stages of devotional practice, Bhajana Kriya, Nista, Ruchi, Asakti, Bhava, Prem, and Bhagavad, or the attainment of the Lord's direct service and association, and how Anarthas are removed through the various stages of practice according to the type and category of the anartha itself. So first we'll look at those which have already been discussed in the last presentation, the eradication of narthas arising from offenses, aparadotha anarthas. So we can see that at the stage of bhajana kriya, these anarthas are removed partially, anywhere between 12 and 25 percent. Again, let us remember that these are not exact percentages. Uh, they are simply an indicator of the various levels of the removal of difficulties created by these anarthas through the advancement of our devotional practice. So when we say partial, we generally refer to 12 to 25 percent extensive about 75% of the removal of their influence on our practice, almost complete and up to complete, which is practically gone altogether, 98% of the removal, and then absolute when such anarthas from aparads committed uh, during the practice of, ba of bhakti are absolutely removed. Vishwanath writes in his Madhurya Kadamari, the sequence in which anarthas arising from impious activities in bhakti are vanquished. So we went over the anarthas that are actually aparads or offenses during the practice of bhakti, which are primarily offenses to the holy name. And now we will talk about removal of the other anarthas. And remember, anarthas are misplaced values, putting value in something that actually has no value. We'll continue now speaking about anarthas coming from our past conditioning and material life, whether it be sinful activities or pious activities that carry into our practice, and then removal of anarthas that come to us from the practice of bhakti itself. Vishwanath writes here, the eradication of anarthas arising from impiety, duskrita jata, and piety, sukrita jata, is as follows. After the stage of bhajana kriya, eradication is almost complete, praiki, at nista eradication is complete, purna, and at asakti, the eradication is absolute, 
Achyantiki. Similarly, the eradication of anarthas arising from bhakti, bhakti jata, is as follows. At Bhajana Kriya, eradication is partial. Ekadesa Vartini. At Nista, eradication is complete. Purna. At Ruchi, eradication is absolute. Achyantiki. Experienced and realized devotees have ascertained and revealed this after thorough deliberation. Again, we'll go back to our graphic. And we see here eradication of anarthas arising from impious and pious activities, duskritotha anarthas, and sukritotha anarthas. From the very beginning, we can see at the stage of bhajana kriya, the influence of pious and impious activities is almost completely removed. Completely removed. At the stage of Nietzsche, Nista and Ruchi is 100%, but it could, under some circumstance, return. And then absolute, from Asakti, Bhava, Prem, all the way up to association with the Supreme Lord, there is the absolute removal of any of the obstacles coming from prior sinful and pious activities. The eradication of these anarthas arising from the practice of bhakti, bhakja utha, anarthas, uh, at Bhajana Kriya, it's partial, coming up to complete at the stage of Nista, and absolute from Ruchi on. So from the stage of Ruchi, Asakti, Bhava, Prema, there's absolutely no influence from Anarthas arising from the practice of Bhakti itself. The primary Anartha from the practice of Bhakti itself is Pratista and Gain desiring profit, adoration, distinction, these fall away as soon as a true and deep taste for the practice of bhakti enter into the sadhika's life. Anarthas from sinful and pious activities are removed in the same sequence. Srila Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur has not separately specified the sequence in which anarthas arising from pious activities are nullified. Absorption in the five types of suffering coming from ignorance is an anartha arising from sinful activities, while absorption in material enjoyment is an anartha arising from pious activities. When one develops attachment, asakti, to Sri Hari, there is no further chance of becoming absorbed in either material happiness or distress. Thus, it is understood that anarthas arising from sinful acts and those arising from pious acts are eradicated in the same sequence. Anarthas arising from the practice of bhakti are absolutely eliminated at the stage of ruchi. After this, the author delineates the sequence of nullification of anarthas arising from the practice of bhakti, such as desires for material gain, worship, and recognition. Upon engaging in the practice of bhakti at the stage of bhajana kriya, there is a partial cessation of the anarthas that arise from the practice of bhakti. This is because this type of anartha manifests from bhajana kriya. At the stage of nista, the cessation is complete, Purna, and at the stage of Ruchi, the cessation is absolute, Achyantiki. In other words, upon developing Ruchi for Bhajan, the desire for gain, worship, and recognition is automatically dispelled. This has been concluded by those with vast knowledge and experience after l- deliberating on this topic. The purport is that Anarthas do not diminish before the stage of Bhajana Kriya. Anarthas gradually begin to diminish after one takes to the practice of Bhajan and becomes steadfast. If one becomes lax in Bhajan, one's Anarthas will intensify so much so that the desire to perform Bhajan will disappear altogether. It is therefore most essential to remain engaged in bhajan, which is attained after developing faith, shraddha, 
and receiving the association of sadhus, sadhu sangha. Without such engagement, the cessation of anarthas is impossible, and until one's anarthas are removed, it is entirely futile even to think one can attain Bhagavan. So again, just a visual reminder, the eradication of these anarthas, which can be referred to from time to time. Sri Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur continues, Sri Nam Prabhu conceals his power from offenders. Now, coming to the end of the third rain shower of his presentation, Sri Madhurya Kadamani, a Vishwanath will go into some deep philosophical understanding in relation to the nature of the holy name and its relationship with our advancing devotional service, and what is the proper conceptual or orientation regarding offenses and anarthas during our practice of bhajan in the association of the devotees. Vishwanath quotes, first from the Pajavali, when the sun-like holy name arises even once, a multitude of sins, which are like an ocean of darkness, are immediately destroyed. Then he goes on to quote from the Srimad Bhagavatam, By hearing the name of Sri Bhagavan just once, even a sinful member of society becomes liberated from material existence. In the scriptures, there are hundreds of similar evidences. The history of Ajamil clearly demonstrates that simply chanting, even just once, a semblance of the holy name, Namabhas, all of one's anarthas, including ignorance, are destroyed and realization by which one attains Sri Bhagavan simultaneously awakens. This appears to be incongruent with the sequence of a ratification of Anarthas previously outlined. It is indeed true that the holy name possesses such potency. Of this there is absolutely no doubt. But because Nam Prabhu is displeased with offenders, he does not reveal his full potency to them. This is to be understood as the sole reason why the anarthas of such persons are not removed. Vishwanath has quoted these two verses of thousands of evidentiary verses found in the scriptures regarding the glories of Harinam. Just as the rising sun dissipates all darkness, similarly, by uttering the holy name just once, all the sins of a living entity, which are like an ocean of darkness, are destroyed. All glories to this all-auspicious Harinam. O Bhagavan, only direct audience of you destroys all of a person's sins. This is not impossible, because merely by hearing your name once, even a sinful member of society is liberated from material existence. Whatever the scriptures explain in regards to the glories of Sri Nama is completely true. There can be no doubt about this. Actually, the scriptures have described but a fraction of Sri Nama's limitless glories. There is no reason to disbelieve their statements. One who harbors any mistrust regarding this will be guilty of the terrible nam-aparad of thinking the glories of the holy name to be an exaggeration or of the aparad of concocting a mundane interpretation. By uttering nam-abas, an inoffensive person destroys all his sins and therefore attains vaikuntha. Now we look to Vishwanath Saartha Darsini, Commentary to the Srimad Bhagavatam, 6 Canto, 2nd Chapter, verses 9 and 10. An inoffensive person will not be delayed in attaining Bhagavan because he does not have to pass through the stages of Shraddha, Sadhu Sangha, Bhajana Kriya, and so forth. For him, there are only two steps, chanting the holy name and ascending to Vaikuntha. Persons such as Ajumil exemplify this. Ajumil had committed many sinful acts, but he was not an operati. 
because of his unremittent attachment to wife and children, there was no opportunity for him to commit offenses such as blaspheming sadhus. As a result, there was nothing to obstruct the potency of Bhagavan's holy name from illuminating his inoffensive heart. On the other hand, although the holy name possesses all potency, it does not manifest its potency to offenders, being displeased with them. One should not harbor even the slightest doubt about the glories of the holy name when it does not manifest its full power because of the offenses of an operati. There's much to absorb here in this discussion, and we will continue in our next presentation to explore this more deeply. But let us include here understanding that there is a distinction between the example of Ajamil, as presented in the Srimad Bhagavatam. Ajamil was not pursuing bhakti, but rather he was simply pursuing enjoyment within the material world, and he chanted the holy name of the Lord, and immediately there was a positive effect. He was able to circumvent the initial stages of devotional practice because he was not involved in the practice of devotion at the time. However, for a sadhika who's come under the guidance of the Lord's external representative, the bona fide spiritual master, and is aspiring to attain perfection of a devotional life, he, in the process of gradual purification, may experience the negative effects of anarthas, and first, the anarthas coming from offenses during the practice of bhakti, primarily those to the holy name, anarthas coming from bhakti itself, and anarthas from prior material sinful and pious activities. So in that regard, his progress may seem to be more difficult because he is experiencing the negative effects of these anarthas. But if we look carefully at the visual presentations, as he quickly advances through the stages of bhakti, their effects diminish profoundly as he comes to the end of the stage of sadhana and enters into the stage of bhava bhakti. I want to thank you so much for taking your time to view this presentation and hope that you will return soon to another presentation on Sri Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur's Sri Madhurya Kadamani. Hare Krishna. <laughs>